Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next Patexia Student Opportunity Info Session. My name is Zoe Bollinger. Most of you probably got an email from me. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes here. I see we still have a couple more people trickling in, so I'll do a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the real meat of the program. I'm here with another one of my coworkers, Kyle, who will kind of pop in and say Hello. hi. Um, Kyle and I together run our student ambassador and research outreach program. Kyle is going to be helping out with the tech side throughout this talk. We're using a program called Crowdcast, which lets us do a couple of really useful interactive things. You might notice we've already seen a couple of you vote on questions that you're interested in. You can add questions as well, and I'll get to them either throughout the talk or I'll hit them at the end of the talk. We also have a couple of polls designed just to get a little more information from you so that we kind of have a sense of the demographics here and you'll see there's a chat window on the side. Kyle will be staying on the chat throughout the course of the talk so please feel free to throw any questions, comments, concerns at him and then we'll be staying on the chat after the end of the conference as well for another five or ten minutes. We found that we often catch a couple of good additional questions there so feel free to do that as well. Um, we started out the chat already with a few useful links if you want to take a look. And with that said, I think we've given you enough time to gather and I'll jump into the content. So we are Patexia. We're a startup based in Santa Monica, which is in Los Angeles, California. And our real focus is on crowdsourced research. We tackle really interesting and fascinating research problems where people want a new or an innovative technical approach and perhaps a different perspective or a different spin on an old problem. And we tackle that through our online platform where we have research challenges and students and innovative thinkers such as yourselves can come on and take a crack at these really interesting challenges. So we think it's a great way to improve innovation for our clients and different companies and organizations around the world and a great opportunity for you to have professional research opportunities where your solutions can get put to work and also a chance for you to really showcase your skills as well. So we do have relationships already with a number of universities across the country and we're looking to build that out and keep bringing in the great results that we've seen so far and the great students that we're collaborating with. So as I said, our business is focused on solving problems through crowdsourcing. And to do that, we act as a bridge. On one side, we have our clients. These are often major tech companies, pretty big name folks looking at tech innovations. We work with universities. We also are working with the NASA Tournament Lab right now, which is one of our most exciting projects. And I think something very cool for all of you to work with. And they're coming to us with kind of different research challenges and trying to get totally blank, flat slate open solutions to look at things in a, in a brand new light. Um, so all of these different stakeholders come to us and they present us with a challenge, with a question that they want solved. And we post that question on our website, patexia.com, um, as different research challenges. And then our community, which hopefully some of you will join shortly or are already a part of, can come and put your solutions to these problems and take a chance at winning our prizes and really developing your professional research skills. Um, and so that's the other side of our platform is that community of problem solvers. And so in pursuit of this goal, our, our real idea is to try to get as many great and innovative solutions as possible to these problems and to expand our community of people like yourself who are interested to kind of help us really make a difference and make an impact in the tech world and really change the way we look at these research problems. So there's two different ways that you as a student can get involved. And I'm kind of going to talk you through both of those opportunities in terms with an example of a current contest that we have open dealing with bio-inspired design. The goal of that project is to develop a biologically inspired solution for improving heat retention or recovery for a contained structure. Um, it's a pretty good jumping off project because you can take a number of different approaches. There are material science approaches, chemical approaches, different electrical and mechanical engineering options. There's kind of a really broad range of ways you can come at this. So one way you can get involved is as a problem solver. 
You can sign up to become a member of the Batexia community. It's entirely free and you can take a crack at the problem. Um, there's a detailed description of it, some questions, some of what we're looking for in terms of the response. So what that would look like for you, you would become a member, you take a look at the project, and then either you yourself or you can get together with a group of your classmates, a group of your friends, people that you're interning with, anyone who you think might also be interested, and you can cook up an exciting solution to this and then you can submit it through our platform. It's a pretty easy process. Um, you just kind of click participate and you're good to go. And the other benefit is that I'm using this particular bio-inspired design challenge as an example, but our challenges change all the time. If you're a computer science student and that's not up your alley, or you're coming at it from a different background, there's going to be something coming up for you. And as a problem solver, you'll get our weekly digest, which will tell you about kind of new projects as they come up. And things change pretty quickly. We tend to get a good, pretty broad selection of projects for you. Um, the other way that you can get involved is as a Patexia ambassador. And we see our ambassadors as really the link between us and your school and your community. We, we know crowdsourcing, we know technical problem solving, but you know your school. You know which other students are interested in what, you know what research labs you have that really excel, you know what professors are doing what innovative research, and you're kind of ideally placed to connect people with really interesting research opportunities through Patexia. So as an ambassador, you would be our link to, to your campus um, and kind of sharing these cool opportunities. So for an example of how that might look, if you became a Patexia ambassador and you wanted to work on the bio-inspired design project, what you do is you sign up after this. There's a pretty quick, easy little application that you can go through, and then we'll get in touch and give you a little bit more of a background on what being an ambassador means, some more in-depth materials to help you out. And then you'll get a one-pager describing each new project that we have. So with this Byron Inspired Design, it'll give you a little bit of a background of the problem, some of the issues at stake, some current solutions that are being thought about and the questions that we're looking to answer. And we'll also give you some suggestions on outreach. Maybe we'll point to a couple of labs on your school that might be an interesting place to start, some professors that might be an interesting place to start, some real something to springboard you on your way as you get started reaching out about this particular project. And then what you'll do is it's kind of up to you how you want to reach out and how much time you want to spend reaching out. You can contact other students. We'll give you some email templates and such to help you do some outreach to different professors or different research labs. We'll give you some materials to help explain why the project's interested, who might be a good fit for the project. And you can, through our platform, send different referrals and kind of get people started. And we see it as a really good opportunity for professional development. I remember being in school and always kind of being interested in certain professors, but not really having a good reason to reach out to them, not really a good reason to start a conversation. Same with some upperclassmen or some PhD students. And this can be a really good way to get that conversation started. You can really come to them with something that's interesting for them. You can get in touch and say, hey, I looked at your research. Your research is really interesting to me. There's, you know, something I heard about that's kind of similar and might be a good opportunity for you. And you can spread the word about Patexia, but also use it as a way to start your own conversation, kind of get to know somebody that you really wanted to touch on campus. Um, there's also a lot of other really good opportunities that do come with being a Patexia campus ambassador. As you send referrals and as people that you refer participate, we have a point system and a leaderboard that kind of shows how you're doing vis-a-vis -vis our other ambassadors and also how ambassadors from your school are doing against other schools. We know we've got some pretty intense school rivalries out here in California between USC and UCLA that we're already seeing playing out. And, I'm sure that some of that's a good driver for you as well. Um, but beyond that, it really is a good opportunity. As you get points, you can cash those points out for some sort of easy stuff if you want, t-shirts, pens, different Patexia logos and goods that are kind of fun. Um, and then as you move up, there's some really great other opportunities that we're working on that you'll be able to apply your points to. Um, some of those will include different networking events, ways to get to know people in your field, some educational events as well um, that might be of interest to you, and also things to kind of help you along your career path. 
um, such as networking events with and something to connect you to an HR manager of a tech company that you might be interested in and different events like that. And we can get into more details later as well. But there's some very, very good professional development opportunities here for you. Um, so those are kind of the two ways, just to recap, you are always welcome to be a problem solver. After this, we'll be sending you an invitation to join the platform so you can hop on, take a look around, see if there's anything of interest, come back, check in, hook up with some friends, give something a try. Um, or you can become an ambassador and really take advantage of these other opportunities that we have in terms of professional development, in terms of being able to kind of get recommendations also for your work. and. As you do that, you, you can also always participate as a problem solver. These aren't mutually exclusive. We often have ambassadors see something that they think is a cool opportunity, and they'll do other outreach about it. They'll reach out to some cool professors, some other students, but they'll also get together a group of their friends and give it a go. Um, so don't, um, don't feel at all confined to do just one or the other. So that's sort of the basics of what we've got in terms of student opportunities. I see we've got a good set of questions kind of building up over here, so I'm going to go through and answer those. If anything comes out of my answers or if you have other questions you want, um, please do feel free to chime in, take a chance to chat over, and Kyle will be happy to help as well. And if you have a moment, also answer the polls. Um, so to kind of start with the first question, which is, is working with Patexia as an ambassador the same or as a problem solver, the same as an internship or a part-time job? And the answer to that is no. This is something that's pretty unique. Um, with an internship or a part-time job, you usually have certain hours, certain projects that you're required to work on. We see this as a really great supplemental opportunity for you as a student. Um, you can do this totally in your own time. We know that you know maybe you'll have a month or two where things are pretty quiet and you can jump on and participate in or promote a number of different types of projects and it's not a hugely stressful thing for you. You've got the time. Um, then you'll hit midterms and maybe a couple of weeks will come or finals and you've got some term papers due and it's not a great time. What will happen is we'll continue to contact you about projects but either as an ambassador or a problem solver, it's totally up to you how you want to take these on, how much time, and to what extent you want to get involved. So in that case, it's different. It's also, while we do offer through the points for the ambassador system, some really great perks, it's not paid by the hour in the way that a traditional job might be. Um, so it's something pretty unique, but we think with the different professional development opportunities and with the chance to really test your research skills and get some of that under your belt pretty early on in your academic career, that this is a pretty good opportunity and, and a pretty interesting way to get involved and test your skills. Um, our other really common question is, can international students get involved? Is there an issue with whatever your specific visa situation might be? And the answer is international students can absolutely get involved. A good portion of our existing problem solver community and of our ambassadors are international students. We really enjoy working with you. You bring a great, interesting perspective to the projects, and it's really, um, it's absolutely open to you. So please, please don't feel left out at all if you're an international student. Um, so another question that we've gotten in are, what are the job duties associated with the technical problem solver research opportunity? So I got into that a little bit before, um, but this is, again, totally at your convenience. So what you'll see is a number of projects will come in over the course of a week or over the course of a month, depending kind of what your time frame is. Take a look, see what's interesting. Some of them will be more focused in one field or another. We might get an electrical engineering challenge one week and then another week it'll be more computer science, more aeronautics, it really will vary. So as a technical problem solver, what's really required of you is just to keep an eye out for projects that are interesting to you and then each project has its own specifications of what's required for a successful response and a submission. So you can just take a look at that specific research challenge and see kind of what the proposal looks like for it kind of what is needed to answer the questions. And then you can get together either with friends or alone, tackle it, and just get your submission in by the deadline. But other than that, it's really up to you. Um, 
And our next question is, what is the time commitment? Again, touched on it a little bit, so I'll be brief, but it's really entirely based on your availability. We'll have people who have who participate a lot over the course of a month or two and then have kind of a down month and then come back again. And we'll sort of cycle in and out over the course of the year. So you really can spend the time that you have as is convenient to you um, and get as involved or take a step back as needed. Um, sort of looks like our last question here right now is what kind of pay is associated with most Patexia research jobs and do research projects eventually lead to bigger things in association with the company or the professor? So in terms of pay, the ambassador project has kind of what we've already talked about with that point system where you can redeem those points for anything from a Patexia t-shirt to a LinkedIn recommendation um, to to networking opportunities, to opportunities to speak with hiring managers at really interesting companies. Um, in terms of the problem solvers, each of our challenges does have a monetary prize. Those prizes will range from a few thousand dollars kind of up from there. And for each project, we'll have several winners. Usually we have a winner and a handful of runners up, and that prize will be distributed among the winners there. The only thing I will mention is depending for some international students, what your visa situation is, we'll work with you to kind of try to figure out a way that you can participate in that as well, because sometimes that can be an issue. Um, but you, you can absolutely earn a portion of that research prize as you participate in these challenges. Um, in terms of leading to bigger things in association with the company or the professor, there are a couple of ways that, that can happen. We have definitely hosted projects for clients where the client has really liked the solution that's been proposed and has looked at hiring the person who submitted that solution as a consultant. So that's one way that we've seen that happen in the past. Um, and as we talk about these opportunities where you can get hired, this is a really good way to connect with companies and to showcase your skills. Um, also, as you are more successful on our platform, we'll reach out to you for more and more different types of opportunities. So this definitely is something where as you succeed and as you get involved, it does build and build and continue to provide new opportunities. Um, so I think that is all of the questions that I see there for now. I'm, I'll check with Kyle and see if there's kind of anything else that's come in through the chat. Uh, that you want to hit on? Sure. Yeah, there were a couple of good questions that came in. The the latest one was basically, how do you get the email um, summarizing the available projects? And I answered that in the chat, but just to kind of cover that again here, as a member of Patexia, by joining our community, you'll be subscribed to that weekly digest. So you'll get to see uh, an email with everything that we have in terms of available projects. We also have a monthly newsletter, which kind of does the same, but also elaborates on some of our available projects. And after this call, Zoe and I will send out some invitations so it will come from either one of us it'll say something to the effect of Zoe or Kyle would like you to join Patexia you can follow that link it's a very simple and completely and always will be a free process and after which you'll become a Patexia member and everything else can kind of go from there um, so I'm going to keep an eye on the chat box for the next couple of, of minutes. I know we talked about a few different things and I'm sure maybe brought up some new questions in your mind. So we're going to stick around here and answer some more questions. Um, so keep those coming, whether it's through the chat or through like the ask a question feature either way. And then again, you can also view this uh, recorded at any point after the fact. So if there is something you'd like to get out there and then want to even come back to it for future reference, you can do so as so long as we talk about it here. Um, yep, so we will be here. Feel free to rewatch this. Um, in terms of next steps from us briefly, what's going to happen after we sign off and stick around to answer your questions, we will, you'll also be getting invitations from us to join the platform. Please do feel free to take a look around, sign up, um, and we'll also be sending along some more info on the Ambassador Program and how to sign up for that if you're interested. Um, if you have any other questions, do please feel free to add them. I'll stay on for another kind of minute or so, or we'll be here for the next 10 or 15 on the chat if you want to send more things in. You can also always email us at ambassadorpatexia.com, and Kyle or I will get back to you pretty quickly. So um, that's pretty much a wrap for what I have at the moment. Thank you very much for coming and for giving us your valuable time. And we're very much looking forward to work with you and your schools. And I can't wait to hear from you all. Have a good one.